Okay, so today's recording was requested by subscriber Alejandro. He wanted me to do a video on the different management reports CloudBeds has. Um, you can always request a video type in the comments of YouTube because I do look at them. Um, I actually, I can't show you the actual reports because they contain private financial information. Um, and some of them have private guest information. And nowadays I'm not editing videos. Um, so I'm just recording them straight. Uh, but I'll, st I still have a few things to show you to like summarize what actually exists in cloud beds and how I use them, which ones I do use. Um, and then if you want like a more personal walkthrough, of course, CloudBeds offers demos of their software. And if you use my link, it, that's in the description of uh, this video, you and you do decide to change to CloudBeds, um, then you get a $50 discount for using my link instead of just going straight and signing up uh, with CloudBeds direct, directly. Um, so anyway, they're very good at showing you um, an in-person like demonstration of a report you want to know more about. But anyway, I'm going to show you what I know right now. And let's just summarize what's actually on the reports the area of CloudBeds, which is right here. Um, okay, let's see here. So first thing is production reports. There's, of course, your rep par, room sold slash occupancy, average daily rate, Channel production, meaning, um, you know, Expedia, Booking.com versus your direct booking types like phone and walk-ins and stuff and your website. Uh, reservations by rate plan, meaning, you know, you have your normal base rate, but maybe you have a different rate for, you set up a different rate for like weddings or something. Um, and then, of course, reservations by country. And then there's your financial reports, the payout commission report. We don't record like what we pay in commissions uh, to like say Expedia in CloudBed, so we have no use of this, <laughs> um, but you can set it up so you see that sort of thing. Uh, transaction report is the biggest, it's like the daddy of all reports and you'll use it for the vast, vast majority of things. They have a lot of different selections for you to sort by like any financial anything basically. Um, and yeah, just learning how to use that is a big part of management um, for your hostel or hotel. Um, and then there's your daily financial report, adjustments, which I don't know. You can do adjustment reports in your transaction report. So adjustments are anything that um, you subtract out of someone's folio. So if uh, yeah, card fees are added to reservations at our property, and if someone pays by cash, we adjust their card fees so that their card fees are zero. <laughs> Um, so, but we don't use this because the transaction report is amazing. Payment ledger, tax report, which if you watched my, um, tax, our monthly tax video, room tax video, uh, you'll see I don't actually use this tax report. I use transaction report and one other report. Um, and then invoices report. And daily activity reports would be the next one. Uh, account balances, I use that in my tax report to see who has money still owed on their reservation. Cashier report, we only have because we pay for the cash drawer feature. Uh, so obviously, we are going to be missing some reports that you may have when you sign up. Uh, so we don't pay for Pi, for example. I know that's a common add-on that people pay for. And we also don't pay for the housekeeping features. Um, we just train our, our supervisors how to read uh, the calendar section. So we don't, we don't do that. Um, so anyway, so our reports may be different than yours. Uh, then we have our arrivals report, departures report, in-house report. I think all of these three are available through the dashboard um, for your receptionists and stuff. Uh, we just, so we, but we don't actually use these. Um, what we do use on a daily basis is the no show and the cancellations report. Um, so our daily managers, uh, go to these in order to reconcile, um, commissions on Expedia and booking.com mostly. Um, and then oh, there's a room assignments report, notes, payment reconciliation report, 
user reconciliation report, daily revenue report, uh, remove report. I don't know what the vast majority of these are because I've looked into them and then I found that they weren't useful. So, <laughs> And then there's the uncategorized, which is police report, stock and inventory, and payment processing report, which I think there was a time when I used to use this and you can use this. It like just shows you every time CloudBeds tries to process a payment for you, whether it's a refund or a payment. Uh, that sort of thing, and um, there's all these filter features, but I don't see, like, a reason to use it really <laughs> anymore. Um, okay, and then that, that's just what's in the report section, just to give you an overview of what's even there, because um, a lot of these, like, you'll see these mentioned in a knowledge base article. I'm going to show you later this one, where it summarizes all the reports. Um it, by the way, it doesn't contain everything. There's a few missing ones on the knowledge base. But that that's just like normal reports. So there's other reports that I actually do use every once in a while, like when we encounter an issue. For example, when I changed the year's worth of prices, I exported um, avail like the our rates from the availability matrix. Um, so that that's sort of a report. Uh, I definitely used the reservations um, section recently to generate a report that showed us all the booking.com channel select specifically um, bookings that had been made in CloudBed since we switched to it because we're not supposed to get channel collect bookings, but we received a couple, maybe three in a row actually, and we're like, whoa, <laughs> let's make sure like all of these are handled because our receptionists aren't trained to handle channel collect because we don't do that. And then there's um, a few other things that could be considered reports in the manage section. So like definitely like logs, like email delivery log. Not that I've ever used that, um, but I definitely have used the activity log actually this week because uh, we overbooked on female only because it looked like one of our blocks for maintenance was missing because we're um, renovating right now. And I wanted to look up if it was a receptionist who moved the block out of the way um, or if it was a manager who set up the the blocks incorrectly. So I could look at like basically any change made in cloud beds to see who did it and even if the system did it. Um, and most of that's right here, which I that that's for like high level stuff, which I really appreciate that's there actually. <laughs> But back to just the general reports. Um, so you can find information about them in a knowledge base article. And most of them are contained here. They'll tell you like all the different filters and stuff and they'll show you screenshots. Again, you can still ask for a CloudBets demo. You can use the link um, that I provide and um, and that will show you kind of an in-person thing at a level that I really can't because it reveals information about our hostel. But um, these are pretty good, actually. Um, so you could just go here to My Front Desk, I think is what CloudBuds used to be called. My Front Desk is what um, the part of their website where they sell on our website. <laughs> bookings. <laughs> I think that's what it's called, my friend desk. Anyway, um, there's a knowledge base article on just reports in general. So I'll put a link in the description of this video that shows you this area. So if you want to see how RevPAR works, because um, I'm not the kind of, ma I'm not the manager who deals with RevPAR. I don't know if somebody does use RevPAR. Um, there are just other levels of managers at my property. Um, okay, and then, of course, there are a few things that aren't actually contained on here. So I was going to, I guess, demonstrate off screen. So there's a few. I think it's the average daily rate that there is no knowledge base article about. Uh, reservations by rate plan. And ooh, room move report. Uh, so I'm going to take this off screen and I'm going to just kind of explain to you what they contain since there really is no information. So average daily rate. Um, there's a graph and you can compare year to year, the entire year or just, uh, you know, 2019 January to 2019, um, sorry, 2020 to 2019, you know, just January or something like that. And 
<clears throat> so there's a graph that shows you on the x-axis, like month by month or day by day, whatever you choose. Um, and then on the y-axis is the average daily rate. I don't know exactly how that's calculated. Um, it looks kind of like our base rate. It starts at $24 just on the auto-generated report. It goes up to about 31 which is we have low prices. Anyway, at the bottom, there's also a chart that has um, a few columns. So the first one is the, like, the date, like the month or whatever. And then after that, it shows like ADR 2020. Um, I'm sure if I added, uh, then it might have ADR 2019. And then it shows accommodations booked 2020. And then maybe accommodations book 2019. So you could just compare these things. And then room rates 2020, room rates 2019. Uh, whatever you select to compare um, will be on the below chart area. Um, when you create it, of course, you could select the year you want to compare the the length. Um, so yeah, like you could choose a full year, just one month, that sort of thing. You could also um, filter by just one room type if you wanted to, or a couple room types. Um, so like only private rooms, something like that. And then you could also sort by reservation source. So if you're only interested in OTAs or only interested in walk-ins or, or just phone bookings or something like that, you can, you can choose that for, this is for the average daily rate report. Okay. Let me off screen again. Reservations by rate plan. Oh, so this, this is literally just a list of reservation numbers and the names of people who booked by a certain rate. So if you want to look for just your standard base rate um, or you just want to look at like wedding rates or, you know, anything. If you have a lot of special rates, you can sort by that. Um, and you can also look, um, sort by date booked, check-in date, check-out date. Again, rate types and room types, which means like private rooms only or female only, dorms only, something like that. Okay, and then the last one, the the room move report that's not anywhere on this knowledge base article is literally you could just sort by date range and um, either all reservations, only confirmed reservations, pending ones. I don't, we don't even have pending. I don't know what that means. And uh, in-house reservations. So you, it literally just lists any room or any time someone was assigned a room or changed room or changed beds. So um, right now, the auto-generated report showing me a bunch of system, like room assignments. It says, okay, this particular reservation was put in room eight or it was moved. No, it's literally, it just tells you, okay, this was moved from room eight to room one. This one was moved from room 13, bed B to room 13, bed C. And it will tell you who moved it or if it was just moved by the system, I guess. I guess those might be um, auto-assigned reservations. Why else would it be the system and not a receptionist or manager moving a reservation? I don't know. Anyway, that was the final one. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't show you exactly um, how the reports work and everything. We actually we don't use that many. Um, but also, uh, I found that I really don't enjoy editing <laughs> uh, these videos and blurring things out and that sort of thing. So I've just decided to focus on uh, videos that, um, that don't require editing, basically. And so I'm going to have to do a lot more things off screen from now on. Um, but I do appreciate getting the request. I just don't uh, know that I'm super helpful with this. But uh, if you use the knowledge base article to say, look at the, what the transaction report is, that's going to tell you like exactly what's up with the transaction report, all the different settings you can choose from. And uh, you can have a, someone demonstrate this to you in the demo or maybe get a support person to help you. That's another thing, the support people, they're good at like pointing out the information about how the report actually works and maybe even how th certain things are calculated. Uh, but they're not so good at knowing like how exactly properties should be using their features. So I was really lost when I was originally making um, our first month's room taxes. Um, I didn't really have a system. You kind of had to rely on myself because the support people didn't really know how to help me other than say, oh, maybe use the transactional report. <laughs> so, um, 
yeah, anyway, um, you kind of do to some degree have to figure things out on your own um, because uh, they're just, I don't think they're trained on um, how the specifics of how people use their software. Uh, that would be a lot to train people on. Anyway, so that is my summary of all the management reports in CloudBeds as of right now. So this is what, January 26, uh, 2020. So um, I think they just auto add reports all the time and change things a little little by little. So it could be different by the time um, you sign up for CloudBeds or in your particular account. Anyway, I hope this was helpful, Alejandro, and have an awesome day.